Hello and welcome. This is Coach Ulysses bringing you the basics on how to play chess. Today we're going to be going over the pawns. So let's get started. The pawns are very important in chess because they help you set up attacks. They help you to protect your pieces. And they help you to invade your opponent's territory. So in order to use these pawns effectively, I will show you how they move. Where the pawns rest right now are their point of origin. It's their starting gate. Pawns only move forward. They move forward. They can move one square forward or they can move two squares forward. Whichever one you choose, if you decide to make one move forward, it can no longer go two moves again. If you decide to move it two squares forward, it can only begin moving one square forward at a time. I'll show you. If I was to move this pawn, I could move any one of these pawns from the first move. I can move any one of them, right? So I'm choosing to move this pawn here, the D pawn. I can move it up one square, or I can advance this pawn two squares, one, two. Now my, it's my opponent's turn to move. He or she could move one of their pawns forward one or two squares, whichever one they want. Let's say our opponent here decides to move up two squares, just like we moved our pawn up two squares. One, two. Now what we have here is these two pawns are blocked and they cannot move any longer. Let's move another pawn. Our opponent might want to make a pawn move that moves just one square. Let's say we move up two again. Okay, now we come to the point where our opponent could capture our pawn here because pawns only capture any piece that comes directly diagonal to it. So here you see this black pawn in the center and my pawn here. So my opponent can take my pawn because it's di directly diagonal to one another. So this is how it happens. This is how it works. And then he would put my pawn to the side of the board. Let's say I move this pawn forward and my opponent moves this pawn here. Now this pawn is directly diagonal to my pawn. So now my pawn can capture his or her pawn. See that? 
This point now can capture that because it's directly diagonal to it. Right. Let's say my opponent move this pawn, the F pawn up one square. I see again that I can capture I can capture or I can still move forward. Pawns do not have to capture. They can move forward. They can just keep moving forward. They can just move forward. Okay. Let's say I decide to take. Right. Now, my opponent has a decision. My opponent could capture my pawn here because it's directly diagonal to it. Right? He could. He can. My opponent can capture this pawn. But let's say for the sake of this lesson that they missed it. All right? Yeah, you know, you're playing chess. You're having a good time. Um, you're thinking about everything that's going on. And you happen to forget that you can capture that. Right? So your opponent makes this move here. So I said, oh, I can capture that pawn again. Your opponent is becoming very generous. You should thank them <laughs> at the end of the game. But they might not want to, they might not feel uh, in the mood of <laughs> saying you're welcome. Okay. So let's say the opponent moved his pawn up two spaces. Now we come to the point where pawns can change. They can become a different piece. It's called pawn promotion. Anytime a pawn reaches the back rank of his or her opponent's back rank, it can become a queen, a rook or a knight or a bishop. The choice is yours. Usually when the pawn enters your opponent's back rank, they go for the most powerful piece, which makes sense. So your pawns can be promoted to queens. And it doesn't matter how many pawns you bring behind your, your opponent's back rank. They can be promoted to a queen. So this pawn here, if I make this move here, now I can make all different types of pawn moves here. I can move this one up one. I can move this one up two because this is... This, these two pawns here have it moved from the original spot. So it still has the privilege of moving up two squares, right? Or it can just go one. But if I want the pawn promotion, I do this right now. I can do it right now, right? So I push the pawn forward. And now this pawn can no longer remain a pawn. It has to change into another piece. It gets promoted. And so the way you promote, wherever the pawn reached the back rank, let's say I wanted a queen, I would remove this pawn and put in an extra queen. You could have two queens if two of your pawns reach this back rank. You could have three if Three of, if three of your pawns reach your opponent's back rank. Or four. The most I've ever seen promoted was four pawns. I've never, ever seen that before. Um, the most, the many, and you probably won't be able to do that. It's extremely difficult to march four of your pawns past your opponent's back rank without them being attacked without them being stopped by another pawn or captured, okay? All right. 
So pawns look to go into your opponent's territory. You can look at them as like soldiers. They're looking to get a foothold into your opponent's territory. Now, I want to show you how pawns, we'll go over it again. can attack, all right? Remember, if it was black to move here, and he moved the pawn up one square, this is the pawn that can capture him. See that? Now, it's Black's turn, directly diagonal to one another. That's how they capture, right? So you go, right? And now these two pawns are blocked. They cannot move. Pawns cannot go side to side. They can't go in reverse. They're the only piece in chess that cannot go in reverse. Cannot happen and they can't capture in reverse. Let's say if this pawn was here, and that pawn was there, this pawn cannot come back here. That's illegal, cannot happen, all right? That won't ever happen, all right? Okay. So, now I'm gonna show you how pawns protect one another. Okay. Let's say we move this pawn forward. And for the sake of this example, our opponent moved here, right? So look, we see now what we're talking about. My pawn could capture this pawn because it's directly diagonal to it, right? But let's say I don't want to take that pawn. I have a different plan. Maybe you might have a different plan. Let, let's say you want to just keep this pawn here. The way you would protect this pawn is just to move the pawn right next to it diagonal. See that? See that? So now, if our opponent so choose to capture our pawn that we didn't want to move, now the pawn that was directly diagonal to it can capture this pawn. And that's how the pawns protect one another. We call we call this a pawn chain. Very strong. This is a very strong pawn structure. It's called the pawn chain. Okay. Let's say we had a queen here. And for some odd reason, I don't know why someone would want to do this, <laughs> but let's say our opponent says, I want to capture that pawn, okay? Remember, the value of a pawn is one, all right? It's one point. Value of a pawn is one. Value of a queen is nine, okay? So let's say our opponent says, I want to capture that pawn. Comes in. captures our pawn. Look at our pawn behind the pawn that our, our opponent's queen just captured. That pawn comes into play. See that? 
And now, because pawns capture on a diagonal, this pawn can now capture your opponent's king. Same thing with the rook. If the rook was to capture this pawn, Now my pawn on F2 can capture the rook on E3. See that? Because it's directly diagonal. All right. Pawns can protect your pieces in the same manner that they capture. For instance, This pawn now is protecting this knight. It's protecting this knight. Because if anything came over to capture this knight, Bob, is this? Let's say this bishop was in the corner and it wanted to capture this knight. This bishop, let's say it's the bishop's, um, black's turn to move. Captures the knight. Look at our pawn. Dia directly diagonal to our pawn. We could capture it. You don't have to, but you always want to get, when you capture something, you always want to get equal to greater value equal to greater value. So if they captured our knight, we want to be able to capture something in return of equal or greater value. So yes, this would make sense to capture the bishop. So your opponent gets a knight, we get a bishop, and they're both worth three points, right? Now we only use the point system to talk about the value of the pieces. The points mean nothing in chess, all right? Just to give you a sense of the value of the pieces, that's why they gave a, a value to the pieces. If this rook decided it wanted, wanted to take to, uh, to capture this pawn, if this rook decided it wanted to capture this pawn, it could just slide right here, right? Now you want to protect it. So you can move this pawn forward. And now, and now it is protected. It is protected. See that? It's protected. So if the rook came down to take the pawn, the rook came down to take the pawn, the rook came down to take the pawn, now the pawn can take the rook. See that? That's how they protect one another. Pawns can protect one another. This is a nice pawn structure here. Anything tried to come after this, this pawn in the center, let's say it's a knight. Let's say it's a knight. Let's say the knight tried to capture that pawn. Now you have a choice of which pawn can capture that knight. Either one, doesn't matter. This pawn could capture the pawn on e3, can capture the, the knight on d4. Or the pawn on c3 
can capture the knight on d4. All right. Bishops and pawns work great together because the bishop can protect the pawn and the pawn can protect the bishop. All right. Let's say we have a situation like this. Notice the same way the pawn would capture when it's its own when its own piece is diagonal to it, it's protecting it. Right? So this pawn is protecting this bishop. Let's put a knight here. Now this one pawn is protecting both of these two pieces. Look at that. Doesn't matter. For instance, let's say we had a position like this. I put that right there. Let's say the knight. I'll put it up. Let's put it over here. Sorry, excuse me. Let's say if the knight wanted to take this pawn, it can, but now we can recapture. See that? For some odd reason, let's say the queen wanted to capture the bishop here. Now our pawn can capture the queen. Pawns work great together in tandem. They work great together. Pawns do not work well by themselves and they can be easily stopped. Okay, I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is what happens when a pawn is working together and another piece is not accompanying it. Let's say it's Black's turn to move. Pawns can give a king a check. Check. The king is in check. When a king is in check, it has three options. Capture the piece that's checking you Block the check, and here, that's not an option because, because of the pawns direct, being directly diagonal to the king, or the king could move away. But here, we call this an isolated pawn. There's nothing protecting it. Nothing protecting it. So the king could choose to just... Take it right off the board, capture it, if it want, or it can move here. If the king moves here, this pawn can no longer move forward. So it's very easy to stop pawns that are isolated. Not easy to stop pawns that are not isolated, okay? So we had, we had this position here, right? And we said if the king came here and we moved here and we would say we would pronounce check because the king is in danger, but there's nothing protecting this pawn, right? So the king could just take the pawn. Now, okay, let's try this. Let's say it's black's turn to move here, right? And you move your king up and he moves here because the king can't move there because he would be moving into check and kings cannot move into check. Cannot. 
but the king can move here. This is how we would protect this pawn. Move this pawn, not this one. Move this pawn. Because now these two pawns are working together and the king cannot capture this pawn because this pawn in the back is protecting this pawn here. It's a little pawn chain, very little pawn chain here, okay? So the king would have to come around the back, right? But it, the king still can't capture this pawn because this pawn is protecting it, right? So let's say I move my king here and our king says, okay, I'm going to capture this pawn. There's nothing protecting this pawn. Now we push. Let's say if the king comes after us and now we get to the back rank for our promotion and we say we want a queen and now we have a total different game. In this position, white is winning. And I will, in one of these videos, I will show you how to trap a king when you have a king and a queen. This is a winnable game for white. And that will conclude our lesson with the pawns today. I hope this will be um, a very informative video for you, learning how to use the pawns. The pawns are, have been called the heart and soul of chess. So I hope you enjoy your day and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.